I hope you are all well. I am, I feel fantastic and ready to, to get back to the flow of things. There you go. My evolutionary algorithm has already discovered more than a hundred stable configurations. Drawings of the orbits would fill a gallery with postmodern art, but that's not my goal. The real solution to the three body problem is to build a mathematical model so that, given any initial configuration with known vectors, the model can predict all subsequent motion of the three body system. The three-body problem by Liu Zizing is a multi-generational epic, a story that spans decades and involves multiple POVs that snake their way through the main storyline. The protagonist is Wang Miao, a nanotech engineer that is contacted by Beijing police to investigate a secretive group of scientists. Through a series of discoveries, he finds himself logged into a virtual world, a strange reality called the three-body problem with no apparent purpose. So from here onwards, he starts to unfold a conspiracy that transcends culture, race, the world as we know it. Two memorable characters come to mind. So on the one hand, we've got Wang Miao, a very in an incredibly smart, intelligent, yet broken scientist. And although we do get to see family dynamics and a little bit of his personal perspective on, on the world that surrounds him, he's more a vessel, a vessel to narrate the mind-boggling ideas that the author wants to come through in this, um, in this story. Kie Wenjie, on the other hand, is a, a woman that survived the perils of China's cultural revol revolution and survived imprisonment and punishment and torture and many other horrors without sacrificing her principles and with astounding intelligence. I believe overall characterization is not the main focus of the story, but the way that interpersonal dynamics are interlinked with the scientific ideas is very well executed. There's a blurb from a little known author from New Jersey. I don't know, you might have heard of him. He's, he's called uh, George Martin. And it's, he says, a unique blend of scientific and philosophical speculation, politics and history, conspiracy theory and cosmology. I consider myself a fairly well-read person of um, average intellect and um, there are parts of the, this book where it feels like you need a PhD in astrophysics uh, to fully grasp what, what is going on. Um, but I think there's several layers and the author has enabled those people with the knowledge and the <laughs> cerebral processing abilities to understand but there is also that sense of awe and 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 wonder and something that can only be described as cosmic horror there are parts of this book where the weight of your existence really bears down on you and and you wonder of your your place in this vast vast universe and and the the point of, of everything, really. I had a little bit of a, an existential crisis. There's nihilism and, and a futility of us mere mortals just going about and doing our daily bullshit. And it's a sensation that I have never before felt in a book. And that's not to dissuade you from reading it. It's, I think it's something that you need to feel. As you may or may not know, I'm a big fan of treasure hunts. And this book feels like, like one on a gigantic scale on a galactic scale and it just it propels you to continue there's clues and there's discoveries and then there's what you're uh, sort of questioning what where's the next one where's the next one and it just it carries you through the story mm. 
You might think that there is probably not a lot of world building going on in a science fiction book without a secondary world, but that's not true. In this story, Wang Miao has to experience different civilizations within the virtual reality known as the three-body problem. And the way that, that they combine history and philosophy and, and science all put together, it makes for a fascinating setting. Every time that I read a book that has been translated to English, I really regret not being able to, to speak and read and write the original language. Translating a work of fiction is a monumental task. You need to be a very skilled writer yourself in order to translate the, the beats of, of the, the pacing of the story, the narrative, the same lyricism. It's, it's a nightmare of a work and all of the translators out there have my praise. This particular book was translated by Ken Liu, a, an American science fiction and fantasy writer, and I think he's done a brilliant job. He's a, he, he was able to capture the original essence of the story that comes through in odd pacing and strange structures that might not be familiar for someone that is more in tune with uh, Western ways of storytelling, whilst making them understandable and captivating and propelling you to, to, to read, to keep on to the narrative. My overall impression is this is a really good book out of 3.5, 4.7. In all seriousness, I think anyone would would um, benefit from reading this. I know that the Netflix adaptation has been surrounded by some controversy and um, the legitimacy of uh, separating author and work grants a whole video in itself. Um, I know he has certain, the author uh, has certain views on the overall political situation in China, but I'm not getting into that and I didn't, I didn't want to emphasize on that. I was merely focusing on the book. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed the video and leave a comment if you want to read it or if you've read it and you've got any any comments. Avoid spoilers though. I'll see you in the next one. The three, um, uh, hey, no. <clears throat> the three body problem by Lucy Singh is a story. <sighs> the three body problem is a story. The Three Body Problem, a story. Mm -mm -mm. Ow. Bloody hell.